this video is really two videos in one. I decided to take my final Oscar predictions as well as talk about the Best Picture nominees and how I would rank them personally. Essentially, they're basically reviews of some of the movies I did not have a chance to review yet for whatever reason. So I just thought it would be easier to do this in one video. So with the Oscars coming up this upcoming Sunday, it was delayed by two months because of the pandemic. Now let's get a chance to actually talk about the nominees and kind of go more in depth with them because I didn't really get a chance to uh, when I reacted to the nominees. So let's start off with Best Picture. The nominees were The Father, Judas and the Black Messiah, Mank, Minari, Nomadland, Promising Young Woman, Sound of Metal, and The Trial of the Chicago 7. Uh, mostly solid category overall. Um, there was definitely a few surprises that weren't there, like, uh, Ma Rainey's Black Bottom, One Night in Miami, uh, News of the World, those are just some of the ones that I could think of. Uh, obviously, The Five Bloods was just snubbed completely, but I figured at this point, unfortunately, even though that movie was fantastic. And also, I heard rumors that they were, not really rumor, but it was like, I thought it was confirmed last year, it's like, oh, we're going to nominate ten movies this year, because that whole five to ten rule that they have is beyond stupid. It's really dumb. And as far as these nominees go, most of these I just predicted uh, with these, like The Father, Jesus of the Black Messiah, Mank, Minari, Nomadland, uh, Charles Chicago 7, Promising a Woman. Sound of Metal was a very good surprise. I was really happy about that. Uh, I thought One Night in Miami would get the nomination from Amazon. But, oh well. And it seems like Nomadland will probably win this one, and I'm going to talk about that later in this video about why I think, don't think it really should win Best Picture, but whatever. As far as, like, what I think should win for Best Picture, um, I feel like any of these other movies deserves it. Like, I feel like this is a year where pretty much all the nominees kind of deserve it for one reason or another. So, with the exception of, like, Mank and Nomadland, I feel like, no. Uh, but Nomadland will probably win it, anyway. For Best Director, the nominees are Thomas Vinterberg for Another Round, David Fincher for Mank, Lee Isaac Chung for Minari, Chloe Zhao for Nomadland, and Emerald Fennel for Promising Young Woman. Uh, pretty solid category overall. We got two women nominated this year for Best Director. Uh, fantastic. Um, Lee Isaac Chung was nominated for Minari. Fantastic. David Fincher, you know, I love David Fincher, but I don't know if he really deserved a Best Pick Director nomination. I would have given it to someone else. Maybe, like, Aaron Sorkin, maybe. But then again, his movie wasn't really well-directed. Like, when he was snubbed, I'm like, you know, I'm not really that upset because, like, the star of that movie was really the stars themselves and the screenplay itself. So it just, it didn't bother me when he was snubbed for Best Director. It's really surprising to see another round here for Best Director. I heard, like, there's some rumblings for that, but, you know, I thought, oh, that's probably nothing. It's, it doesn't seem like that's really going to happen. But it did happen. But, you know, it's really good because I thought another round is actually really good. As far as who I think should win direct Best Director and who will win Best Director, I think Chloe Zhao will definitely win this. Although I would personally give it to Emerald Fennel for Promising a Woman. I thought that was a better movie overall, personally. So, but Chloe Zhao, she'll win this. She deserves it, kind of. Even though I don't really love Nomadland, and I'll explain that later. Best Actor. The nominees are Riz Ahmed, Sound of Metal, Chadwick Boseman, Ma Rainey's Black Bottom, Anthony Hopkins, The Father, Gary Oldman for Yank, Mank, and Stephen Young for Minari. Uh, mostly solid category with the exception of Gary Oldman. He's good, but best actor? No, I would have nominated someone else, like Delroy Lindo from Defy Bloods. There's almost nothing for Defy Bloods, and that's really upsetting. Uh, really great to see Stephen Young here, the first Asian actor nominated for best actor. Uh, Riz Ahmed, first Muslim actor for best actor. Chadwick Boseman, great to see him here. He was fantastic in Maori's Black Bottom, and it seems like he's definitely going to win it. Uh, it's obviously very heartbreaking to see that performance, and it's definitely going to him. Um, Anthony Hopkins, I loved him in The Father. I thought he was better than Chadwick Boseman, but Chadwick Boseman's going to win. So, Boseman will win. Uh, Hopkins or Boseman deserve it. And, you know, Riz Ahmed and Stephen Young do deserve it as well. Gary Holman, get out. Get out of there. You're fine. You aren't that amazing. Uh, best Actress. The nominees are Viola Davis, Ma Rainey's Black Bottom, Andra Day, or Andra Day, The United States vs. Billie Holiday, Vanessa Kirby, Pieces of a Woman, Frances McDormand for No Man Land, and Carrie Mulligan for Promising Young Woman. This is a very interesting category because, like, you know, one of the good things about the, the Oscars this year, actually, is because I kind of don't know who's going to win. Like, by the time the Oscars come around, I'm like, Oh, God, it's like, yeah, we're going through emotions. Yeah, I knew they were going to win. Yeah, I knew they were going to win. Yeah, I know. And there are some categories this year where I'm like, 
I actually don't know who's going to win. And one of those categories is Best Actress. Because, like, Andre Day won the Golden Globe, Viola Davis won the Screen Actors Guild, uh, Frances McDormand won the BAFTA, I think. Pretty much four of these actresses have a chance to win, I feel like, with the exception of, like, Vanessa Kirby. She was fantastic. Uh, like, kind of weighing the pros and cons. Viola Davis, she was fantastic in Ma Rainey's Black Bottom. Um, Andre Day was really good in the United States versus Billie Holiday. I didn't really care for that film, but she was great in that movie, so I'll defend the nomination. Carrie Mulligan, that was a star-making performance. And Frances McDormand, she was fine. She was, she was good, but she already has two Oscars, so... Come on, give it to someone else. Um, personally, Carrie Mulligan deserves to win this, but who will win this? I have no idea. I think it's going to go to either Davis, Day, or Mulligan. Would really love to see Mulligan, but I think it's more closer to Davis and Day. So we'll see about that. Best Supporting Actor. The nominees are Sasha Baron Cohen, The Trial of the Chicago 7. They honestly should just have a category for Best Supporting Actor in The Trial of the Chicago 7 because that movie was filled with phenomenal performances across the board. But again, get to that later. Sasha Baron Cohen, The Trial of the Chicago 7, Daniel Kaluuya, Judas and the Black Messiah, Leslie Odom Jr. for One Night in Miami, Paul Racy for Sound of Metal, and Lakeith Stanfield for Judas and the Black Messiah. Like, why are they both in Best Supporting Actor? Like, I'm happy for both of them, but, like, who's the star of that movie? Like, like, why? As far as any snubs in that category, there's only, like, a handful of snubs, but it never, like, none of those snubs really, like, thought were, like, upsetting. Like, I heard David Strathairn for Nomadland. Uh, Bill Murray for On the Rocks, Jared Leto for The Little Things, which I'm really glad he's not nominated. He was not good in that movie, unfortunately. So this is a pretty solid category overall, and I think this is Daniel Kaluuya's one to win. He's He already won a bunch of the awards for this performance. He's going to win here. I think it's kind of obvious at this point. So he should win this. He will win this. And even though the perform other performances are good, like Sacha Baron Cohen and Leslie Owen Jr. and Lakeith Stanfield, they're all really good as well. Uh, it's going to be going to Kaluuya on Oscar night. Best Supporting Actress. We have Maria Bakalova for Borat, subsequent movie film. Just call it Borat 2 when uh, they've announced any categories it's in. Because, like, I don't want to hear, like, an entire book when you're basically saying someone's not someone's name. It's ridiculous. So, Maria Bakalova, Borat 2, Glenn Close, Hillbilly Elegy, Olivia Coleman, The Father, Amanda Seyfried for Mank, and Yao Nya Zhang, I'm, I'm probably mispronouncing that, for Minari. Uh, mostly solid category, with the exception of Glenn Close. Why? I, I don't know. Do we just really feel that bad for not giving her an Oscar? Like, really? We're going to nominate her performance in a movie that's mediocre at best? Like, why? I don't know. And... And, like, she's also nominated for Worst Supporting Actress this year for the same performance. And while I don't think she deserves uh, the, the Oscar this year, I don't think she deserves that award either. But I don't know why she's here other than, you know, weak year overall because all the movies were delayed. And we just feel bad because we didn't give Glenn Close the Oscar two years ago. Uh, but other than her, all these nominees, I think, do deserve their nomination. Uh, really happy about Olivia Coleman, Amanda Seyfried, uh, Maria Bakalova, Yang Yong Zhang. Again, probably mispronouncing that. Um, but I think it's going to go to Yao Yezhong for Minari, even though I would be happy if anyone but Glenn Close won. That's all I'll say about that. Best Original Screenplay. Judas and the Black Messiah, Minari, Promising Young Woman, Sound of Metal, The Trial of the Chicago 7. Mostly solid category here. I was really happy to see Judas and the Black Messiah here. I was thinking that wasn't going to be nominated. I figured Mank was going to take that nomination. But Mank did not get a nomination, which is really good, because I thought that movie was really, really dense. So, as far as original screenplay, I think this will go to... I think it, Promising Young Woman will win, and I feel like it should win. Uh, it's really great seeing Sound of Metal and uh, Minari here, but it's gonna. I think it should go to Promising Young Woman. I think it won the uh, Writers Guild Award, so that's a pretty good indicator. Uh, best Adapted Screenplay, we have Borat 2, The Father, Nomadland, One Night in Miami, and The White Tiger. Uh, surprising category overall, mainly with Borat 2 and The White Tiger in there. White Tiger was a, it was a solid movie. Um, I'm fine with it being nominated for uh, Best Adapted Screenplay. Admittedly, it was kind of a weak year. Uh, no surprise that The Father, Nomadland, and One Night in Miami are there. But uh, Nomadland will probably win this one. Uh, and I'll say it deserves it, along with The Father and One Night in Miami, but it's going to go to Nomadland. Uh, One Night in Miami and Father do deserve it as well, but it has no chance. They have no chance.
Best animated feature film we have Onward, Over the Moon, A Shaun the Sheep movie, Farmageddon, Soul, and Wolfwalkers. Uh, Soul is going to win it this year. As much as things have changed with the Academy this year, as I'll mention towards the end, um, things still change the same. Uh, Soul's going to win, Pixar's going to win, and even in years where they don't really deserve it, like last year with Toy Story 4 or the year word Brave One, uh, it's still going to win it. And it should because it is also the best movie that I've, I mean, I've seen. I've seen all, all these movies except for the Shaun the Sheep one. But that movie was fantastic and it deserves to be nominated. And it deserves to win here. Best International Feature Film, Another Round from Denmark, Better Days from Hong Kong, Collective from Romania, The Man Who Sold the Skin from Tunisia, I'm probably mispronouncing that, and Gail Vedis Eda, again, mispronouncing, I'm just an ignorant American, from Bosnia and Herzegovina. Um, another Round will win this, it's nominated for Best Director, moving on. Best Documentary Feature, Collective, Crip Camp, The Mole Agent, My Octopus Teacher, and Time. The only one I'll mention here is because Time will probably win this one, and of these, this is the only one I've seen. It's on Amazon Prime, so I can't really judge it. I'll just root for the one I've seen. Uh, now we get into the specialty categories. I'm not going to talk about the short categories. That honestly should just be its own thing. Like, why do we have to put it up with it in a three-hour show? Just cut them. Please. Sorry. Best Original Score. The nominees are Defy Bloods. It gets one nomination for score. What? I have no idea. Maybe it's because it was released too soon. That's why I feel like. It was released in June, which is not a good time to release Oscars. Oscar bait movies. But, come on. Uh, best original score, Defy Bloods, Mank, Minari, News of the World, and Soul. Soul will probably win this. It's won a bunch of the other awards, so it's no surprise here. Best original song, Fight for You from Jews and the Black Messiah. Hear My Voice from The Trials of Chicago 7. Hootsafik from Eurovision. Uh, EOC scene from The Life Ahead and Speak Now from One Night in Miami. I have no idea. I think it's mainly down to EOC from Scene and Speak Now from One Night in Miami. I feel like either one could really take that. Um, won't be a surprise either way. I would be really surprised if Eurovision won. I'm just really, I'm just surprised it's nominated actually. So, so yeah, EOC, Speak Now, one of those will probably win it. Uh, best sound, we have Greyhound, Mank, News of the World, Soul, and Sound of Metal. Because it has the word sound in the title of the movie, I'm going to go with Sound of Metal for Best Sound. That only makes sense. Probably the only thing that makes sense this year. And the sound design of that movie, admittedly, was ex excellent. It was fantastic. And the way they kind of, like, incorporate how, like, all these sounds throughout the entire movie and, like, how, you know, the main character loses his sound throughout the entire movie is also really fantastic as well. Best production design, we have The Father, Ma Rainey's Black Bottom, Mank, News of the World, and Tenet. Uh, this is a category where I feel like any of these movies could really take it. If I had to like pick one personally, I would pick either uh, Ma Rainey's Black Bottom or Mank to kind of like throw it a bone, because as you'll see, it has the most nominations, but has the least likely chance of winning most of them. So I'll just give that as like a, a pity award, honestly. Best Cinematography, the nominees are Judas and the Black Messiah, Mank, News of the World, Nomadland, and The Trial of Chicago 7. Uh, personally, I would love to see Mank win this with the black and white cinematography, but Nomadland will probably win this category. Nomadland will win, and Mank should win. Best Makeup and Hairstyling, we have Emma, Hillbilly Elegy, Ma Rainey's Black Bottom, Mank, and Pinocchio. Uh, another category where I don't really know who's going to win it, I feel like... Uh, it's mostly coming down to Ma Rainey's Black Bottom and Hillbilly Elegy. I'll give the slight edge to Ma Rainey's Black Bottom, but then again, the makeup and hairstyling category usually goes to movies that usually don't get the best reviews. I mean, I'm looking at you, Suicide Squad, but whatever. To each their own. Uh, best costume design, the nominees are Emma, Ma Rainey's Black Bottom, Mank, Mulan, and Pinocchio. Um, I'm going to go with uh, Emma on this one. I don't know, just to kind of like... It's usually period pieces win, but then again, I think all these movies are period pieces, so I guess that makes sense. Best Film Editing, the nominees are The Father, Nomadland, Promising Young Woman, Sound of Metal, and The Trial of Chicago 7. I would give this to Trial of Chicago 7 to at least guarantee it a win. Uh, Sound of Metal also has a pretty good chance of it winning, but I'm also really glad to see Promising Young Woman and The Father here, as you'll see why. So, Trial of Chicago 7, I think, would be my pick. And Best Visual Effects, the nominees are Love and Monsters, The Midnight Sky, Mulan, The One and Only Ivan, and Tenet. Uh, didn't see Love and Monsters, Midnight Sky, I didn't care for. I thought it was kind of boring, and then the ending, just like, why? Uh, Mulan, didn't really care for it. I didn't even like the visual effects in that movie. One and Only Ivan, I also wasn't really a big fan of. 
visually it was okay. Didn't really blow me away, but then again, like, this past year, like, no movies came out. They almost nominated Bloodshot for visual effects, so there's that. Tenet is the only one that I actually think has the actual... Re it has the best shot of winning, and I also think it's the one that deserves it the most of these movies. Again, I have not seen Love and Monsters, so I can't really judge it for that. So Tenet should win, and I think it will win, because... I think it's the only one with, like, multiple nominations here. Uh, no, Mulan's in costume design, but still. So as far as movies with the most nominations, Mank got 10 nominations. We'll see if it actually wins any because it's kind of shut out of all awards, basically. It's like, hey, we really liked you enough to nominate you for all these awards. Oh, but you're not going to win. Oh, well. Meanwhile, six films got six nominations each, including The Father, Jews and the Black Messiah, Minari, No Man Land, Sound of Metal, The Trial of Chicago 7. It's kind of what I expected for some of these movies like No Man Land and Trials Chicago 7. Judas and Black Messiah and Father and Sound of Metal getting that many nominations. I think that's really great. Uh, Ma Rainey's Black Bottom and Promising Young Woman got five nominations each. Uh, kind of expected a little more from Ma Rainey's Black Bottom, but I kind of expected less for Promising Young Woman, so I'm really happy about Promising Young Woman. Not so much for Ma Rainey's Black Bottom, but we'll see about that. News of the World got four nominations. Not really a surprise, I guess. Uh, One Night in Miami and Soul got more, got three nominations each. Soul, that's kind of where I expected it to. One Night in Miami, I kind of expected a little bit more. And two each for another round, Borat 2, Collective, Emma, Hillbilly LG, Mulan, Pinocchio, and Tenet. So not a whole lot of surprises here. And I don't know, I feel like most of those I was, I'm okay with. Most of the nominations I'm fine with. Again, Glenn Close, why? Get out of there. Gary Oldman, get out of there. And overall, like, a few good things. Like, it's probably the most diverse year for these nom for nominees this year. I think, like, half the nominees were actually diverse, which is pretty good considering, you know, Oscar's so white and the uh, controversy at the Golden Globes this past year. So, that's really good. Now for the second part of the video, I'm going to try to do this as quickly as possible. Like, what's my official ranking of this year's Best Picture nominees? Well, let's start with number eight, Mank. This movie, I really wanted to love this movie. I wanted this to be my favorite movie of the year. Wanted this to be my number one movie to win Best Picture. And unfortunately, it's at the very bottom, and I'm surprised. Like, because it's well acted, it's well made, but it's just very dense. It's just very... It thinks it just knows everything, and I don't like that in a movie like this. Again, performances are good. It's well made. I just felt very disconnected from the actual material at hand. At number seven is probably my most controversial one, Nomadland. Why is this movie so low on this list? Because, again, kind of like Mank, I was like, not really like Mank, but like, I don't know what the point of this movie was. Is it like, is it to show, you know, Frances McDormand, like how this life has changed her, like how this is improving her life, or is it making her life worse? Because like, she's at odds throughout. And while I did appreciate a lot of the scenes with the... Uh, the actual nomads, yeah, they actually used actual nomads in this movie. They didn't even know who Frances McDormand was when they made this movie. Like, those scenes are really good. And, I don't know, it just kind of felt like it was just, like, kind of going through the whole motions and everything. But then again, you could argue that's part of the point. Which, okay, I get it. It just maybe it didn't capture my attention as I feel like it should have. But I would still recommend it in some way to watch it because it's still well acted. It's still well shot. It's definitely worth your time. Just maybe, just maybe pay a little more attention. More than I did. At number six, I'm going to put Sound of Metal. Now, I really dug the production, the sound design of this movie. I really liked Riz Ahmed's performance and even the other actors like Paul Racy and Olivia Cook. And I, I, I really thought this was a really well done movie, kind of like in the same vein, not necessarily the same vein as Whiplash, but it like kind of gave me memory of that, I don't know, it's because of the whole drummer thing, but it's definitely a movie that I'm really happy, is nominated for Best Picture, and I'm really happy I got a lot of recognition here. At number five, I'm gonna go with Minari, this is a very well done movie, all the performances are fantastic, particularly from Steven Yeun, uh, Yeon Yeon Jong, uh, Alan Kim, and Hari Yen, I believe that's how you pronounce your name, again, ignorant American here. So, and I thought this was a very impactful story. I thought it was very well shot, very well written. And it definitely made me appreciate my family a lot more. 
At number four, I'm going to put uh, The Trial of Chicago 7. This was a very fast-paced, well-acted, well-written uh, everything about this movie was really good. I thought every performance in this movie was fantastic, as I mentioned with Best Supporting Actor. Literally, they should have just made a Best Supporting Actor in The Trial of the Chicago 7, because literally, you can nominate a bunch of people for this movie. Uh, Sasha Baron Cohen, uh, Yaya Abdul-Mateen II, Mark Rylance, Franklin Jella. Everyone in this movie is so good. And it's so... And admittedly, the only thing I really didn't care for is like how they wrapped up... Uh, yeah, yeah, Abdul, Abdul Mateen's second storyline. And yes, it did happen in real life, but I kind of wish they added more to it so there would be more more of a payoff for that. I feel like they kind of just cut that off and kind of like focus on all the other ones. But again, really worth your time. Aaron Sorkin's screenplay is incredible. It's, it's definitely a movie that was made for the time that we were living in 2020, and it didn't even know it. And that was really good. Uh, at number three, I'm going to put Judas and the Black Messiah. Now, I put this kind of like back and forth with Trials Chicago 7 because they both had to deal with uh, Fred Hampton at some points. And the performances, of, mainly from Daniel Kaluuya and Lakeith Stanfield, are phenomenal. Dominique Fishback as uh, Fred Hampton's lover throughout this movie. She's also really good. Uh, Martin Sheen and Jesse Plemons both really surprised me in this movie as these corrupt CIA figures that were like, or FBI, I think as these really corrupt FBI figures who were targeting these people. But they were very good. And again, like, Toronto Chicago 7, I thought was very impactful for, like, what was going on last year. At number two, Promising Young Woman. Uh, I really it thought this movie... I thought this movie... I was afraid of going into this movie. It's like, oh, God, is this going to be, like, another Black Christmas or something? But no, it is not like that at all. It's impactful. It's darkly funny at times. It's serious throughout. The Carrie Mulligan is so good in this movie. And even though it's so bright and colorful throughout, despite the dark subject matter, and it's definitely a movie that really hammers home the point of the movie without being preachy. And even though I don't really like the celebrity cameos throughout the entire movie, like, there's a bunch of people in this movie. Um, I still think it's an impactful movie to watch. It's, I th still think it's really impactful to watch. But the my favorite Best Picture nominee of the last year was The Father, and I am so mad at myself because I just watched this the other day. This movie is so powerful. This movie is so good. And I'm... And I honestly would replace Promising Young Woman as my favorite movie of last year with The Father. It's that good. Anthony Hopkins, best performances of his career as you see him lose his mind from, you know, having dementia. And like, how also Olivia Coleman's also really fantastic in this movie. And I also really like how they portray dementia in movies. Because, like, usually whenever they do that, it's usually very very comical or very, like, awkwardly funny. And, like, and that's not really the point of it. And this movie hammers at home. I thought that was really... I thought it was really fantastic. Especially, like, how they had, like, multiple characters play multiple people... Play the same person throughout the entire movie. It's, like, that really... Fit, that really is, like, what dementia is, I think. And it's definitely a more grounded take of the whole, of the disease. And by the end, I just felt so sorry for Anthony Hopkins' character. I thought he was fantastic. In this movie, I thought everyone was really good. And it's definitely a movie that definitely affected me because I know people, I know someone who has dementia. So that's... This and also like kind of like helps and it also kind of shows like the side of the caretaker as well at times, but it's like but it never loses focus from Anthony Hopkins, who again, fantastic. Loved him in this movie. Uh everyone is just so good in this movie. And but it's like you think you're confused, but so is he, and it's like you know what's happening, but he doesn't know. It's so I really enjoyed this movie. So, those are my thoughts on this year's Oscar nominees and this year's Best Picture nominees. Uh, what did you think? Comment down below, subscribe to the channel. This is Pat, and stay safe.